All right, Shalom is real. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is who the world ignorantly calls God. Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, and there's no God beside them. Double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. For being faithful witnesses to the Holy Spirit and salutations to the elect whom the Lord have given ears to hear. So I'm here. Well, I was watching the uh, Elder Apostle Gobar's lesson early this morning. And, um, you know, as I was listening to the Apostle, a, pre a lesson came to mind going into um, what it means to be blessed. And I also want to touch on, real quick, what it takes to be blessed. And um, hey, Shalom to the elder apostles, as I mentioned before. I know the Apostle Bar, he always mentions that this truth to get to the other side, it takes suffering. Yahweh Shah was the greatest example in understanding and teaching us the understanding that it takes suffering, right? Whereas he was slain to receive the blessings of Yahweh, right? So whereas the scriptures say all things were put under his feet, all right? And um, as a matter of fact, to prove that, let's get Revelation 5. Verse 6 I, And I beheld and lo In the midst of the throne And of the four beasts And in the midst of the elders stood a lamb As it had been slain And even the apostle John When he seen Yahawashah He said behold the lamb of God But this is speaking on Yahawashah Having seven horns and seven eyes Which are the seven spirits of God Sent forth into all the earth And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. And when he had taken the book, and this proves also that Yahweh and Yahweh Shah are two separate people. Of one spirit, yes, but of two people. And when he had taken a book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by the blood, by thy blood, out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. Alright? And um hey, through Yahawashai, the seed of Abraham will be blessed ultimately. Right? Through Yahweh as it is written, or as it is written, that Israel at the end of the day will be redeemed from all the nations where they were scattered. Right? And um Let me just keep reading. And has made us unto our gods and kings uh, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign in the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands. Right? So this is the angels pretty much praising Yahweh for his works on the earth. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, strength, and honor, and glory and blessings and amongst this 
he also received well he will also he will also receive all right um these other nations being under his feet psalm chapter 2 Well, no, that's a good one. But Psalms 110, where the Lord says, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. Right? So, yeah, how was I through his, you know, through him being slain? It's lock it. Okay, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand, all right, who is at the right hand of the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, until I make thy enemies thy footstool, right? So that's the uh, succession of things. Yahweh Shah had to come, you know, be slain, and now he's blessed, and so are we in like manner. As we follow Yahweh Shah, as a matter of fact, when you go into the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28. No. It's around 16. Right, Romans 8 verse 17 actually And if children then heirs Heirs of God and joint heirs With Yahweh If so be That we suffer with him So we are joint heirs with Yahweh If we suffer with him The way That way That we may be also Glorified together And at the appearing of Yahweh that's our glory as well. This is um 1 Corinthians 15 verse 23. Start at 22. For as in Adam all die, so in Yahweh shall so all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Yahweh shall the first fruits, afterwards they that are Yahweh shall at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and authority and power. For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. So again, this is the succession of things to where Yahweh Shai was um, recognized in the heavens. Now it's just about him coming down on the earth and being recognized. All right. And therefore, essentially being blessed. All right. What's that word blessed? Right. I got it here. This is one of the examples. As I mentioned before. All right. And for those you newcomers, the only ones that can be blessed are Israelites. Right. This is Genesis 12 and 3. I will bless those who bless you. And curse those who curse you and treat you with contempt. But you know what? Let me just go straight to the word bless. Right? Now, many times in the scriptures, the word bless goes into the Hebrew word Barak, which is H 1288, meaning to bless or kneel. Right, so to be blessed is to, to to kneel, and um, you know, I also wanted to bring out this point with Salakia. You know, it's going to be a quick lesson because I'm on a, I'm on a gig, and I got to go real soon. But I wanted to bring this precept out, you know, because a lot of people may use this as far as all nations being saved, 
all nations being blessed through Abraham. Right? But when you go, so we went into the word bless, right? I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Now, when you go into that word families, that word family meaning clan or tribe. And then when you look up the word clan, it goes into the word uh, genes, family, house, right? Now, when you go into that word genes, well, that's a, I'm sorry, that word clan meaning a group of close-knit and interrelated families, especially associated with families in the Scottish Highlands, okay? A family, especially a large one. Look at this one, a group of people with a strong common interest. All right, also going into the word tribe, line, gene. A gene is a group of families in ancient Rome who shared a name, who shared a name and claimed a common origin. All right, and as it was mentioned, well, you know what? If you don't believe me based upon those um, definitions, you could always go to Isaiah 40, 41 and 8 to clarify things. Because you might say, well, Abraham had many seeds. All right. So which one of his uh, seeds will be blessed? Right. Isaiah 41 and 8. But as for you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, my chosen uh, descended from Abraham, my friend. Right. So as it is written precept upon precept, which is how we ought to teach. But going back to the lesson at hand. All right. To be blessed. Or what it means to be blessed. And what it takes to be blessed, which. The order of things that you want to know. Is that what it takes to be blessed. All right. And then when you are blessed. Oh, what do you receive to prove that you're actually blessed? Well, the place is sanctuary, right? You are all of that stuff. And, and to stay away from it. All of that stuff. As we walk the path of truth, which we're going to find out how narrow that path is, we have to endure all of that stuff and, and to stay away from it. It's kind of like dodging. It's kind of like you trying to get to a place of sanctuary, right? Where you know you're going to be protected. But before you get there to that place, you got to dodge all these landmines. Because if you step on one landmine, there you go, boom, you're out of there. So you got to dodge all these landmines to get to that place of sanctuary. That's how it is being in this knowledge is truth. The landmines are the ignorance of the people, the stupidity of the masses, the false philosophies, the false pleasures of this world, the wickedness of this world, the demons that we got to encounter, the spirits we got to fight against, all of that. That's all these landmines that we got to we got to snake through to get to this place of sanctuary. Which so as you see the Apostle Bar is reading 2 Ezra the 7th chapter. It's a great chapter. Where he's going into, uh, as you see on the screen, the entrance they rub is narrow and set in a dangerous place to fall. Right? And the entrance thereof, like even Yahweh Shah said, they, they don't hate you, but they hate me. Because I testify that the works thereof are evil. Right? And we're following Yahweh Shai, the things that he dealt with, we're also going to deal with. Demons, all right? Uh, inwardly and outwardly, he's going to fuck with you constantly. The, the apostle also brought out in Sirach, the second chapter. When you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation and constantly endure. Right? Nevertheless, on the other side, as we see, it says the entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. 
like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. And the only path between them both, even between the fire and the water. It says, um, Damn, it's locked. Okay, let's start at six. And again, I'm going to just read through real fast. There's another thing. A city is built and set up on a broad field and it's full of good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water, and one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water. So small that there could but one man go there at once. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? Right? And what's and I said it is so, Lord, then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. Right? So this is Israel's portion. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 20 Oof. So this is going into the blessings, right? We're just going to jump, jump straight to the point Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles, the other nations, and set up my standard to the people. And they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders, and the kings shall be thy nursing fathers. Because even to this very day, I mean, hell, there's a prophecy known as the mark of the beast, which is pretty much how this devil wants to uh, hold us in, in prison. Hold us in slavery, i.e. by the mark, the a microchip. The king shall be thy nursing fathers and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am Yahweh, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. So there you go. Right? So... Lord willing you, I can edify it. Again, just a quick review. We went over what it how what it takes to be blessed and what it means to be blessed. Right? And a lot of people have an issue with that. But they don't want to be blessed. Right? The scriptures say, according to Revelation 13 and 9. That the patience and the faith of the saints is to put in captivity those their captives. Right? And this is something that was promised of us by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Psalms 2 and 8, um, Revelation 2, where it says we should beat them with the rod of iron, with the rod, with a rod of iron. Alright. So if that, shalom to the elect.